thank you very much for your support for Barack Obama and a warm reception for all of us here today. I want to talk a few minutes about what this campaign means and why it's important not just to each of you, but to people all across this country and all around the world. The campaign for the Republican nomination for president has been memorable. <laughs> for its negative tone, for the vast gap between its content reality of life for most Americans, and for its many misstatements. But in, but in one respect, in one respect, the Republican candidates are accurate and they're in agreement, and that's on the importance of the election of 2012. It comes at a turning point for our country and for the world. If the United States is to effectively meet the challenges and seize the opportunities of the 21st century, it is critical that Barack Obama be re-elected as president. how it began and how it ended. This century will be no different except in one crucial way. The existence of nuclear weapons has made our lifetime the first in all of human history in which a conflict could come not just to <coughs> an end, but could be the end of civilization as we know it. Just this week, the President met with the heads of 50 countries in a nuclear security summit, continuing his strong leadership of the effort to reduce the spread of nuclear weapons and the threat of nuclear war.
was a great nation long before it was a great military or economic power. This was a great nation at the moment of its founding because of the principles that are set forth in the Declaration of Independence and in the Constitution. They're not, they're not easy to summarize. Surely they include the sovereignty of the people, the primacy of individual liberty, the rule of law applied equally to every citizen and to the government itself, and opportunity for every member of society, whatever his or her background. is imperfect as are all human beings. He's made mistakes, as we all do, but in his life, he has epitomized these American principles. His policies have been grounded in them. His presidency has been committed to advancing them. He has preserved and protected the safety of the American people, the strength of our country, and the sovereignty of our nation. He has earned our confidence and our support, and he should be re-elected as president.
which are steadily restoring our economic and financial health, or go back to the very policies which caused the problem in the first place. needs most of all policies to spur economic growth and job creation while protecting our environment and exercising the restraint needed to ensure our financial health. With the exception of the environment, which they don't even pretend to protect anymore, the President's opponents say these are also their objectives. The problem is that the policies they advocate will have the opposite effect. And if they're unwilling to learn from the past, the American people should not join them. They are enjoying and support President Obama. When President Clinton ran for office, the nation was mired in a recession. He proposed a balanced economic program. I was a Senate Majority Leader at the time, and I remember sitting in the Senate for days listening to Republicans claim that if it acted, the President's program would cause the economy to go down, and interest rates and unemployment go up. Every single Republican in the Senate and the House voted no. And history has proved that every single one of them was dead wrong. took office after his program was enacted, that president inherited a growing economy and a federal budget surplus, which is the exact opposite of what President Obama faced when he took office after eight intervening years of Republican rule. Congresswoman Pinkery mentioned the Supreme Court hearing arguments this week on health care. The principal issue is the individual mandate, which is ironic since it was originally proposed by Republicans. But they've now moved so far away from mainstream center American politics that they're now attacking their own ideas. The Supreme Court should stay out of politics, make a logical constitution. Although I had met him on a few occasions, 
I did not know Barack Obama well, and he asked me to serve as his special envoy for Middle East peace. I believe that every American has a duty to serve our country. So I'm frank to say that I would have accepted whoever the president was. But once in office, I was deeply impressed by President Obama's knowledge of the issues, the reasonableness of his approach, the fierceness of his personal determination. We didn't get a peace agreement in the Middle East, but it wasn't for his lack of trying. And in the dwindling time in which an agreement remains possible, President Obama's re-election offers the best and perhaps the only hope that it can be achieved. is that no one, not you in this room, not his political opponents, not our adversaries abroad, no one should underestimate Barack Obama. Join me in re-electing Barack Obama as President. 